Welcome to the New York Guitar Festival Academy. I'm John Schaefer from WNYC Radio, and with me is Debashish Bhattacharya, who performed two sets for us at the, at the Raga Marathon in Brookfield Place yesterday, a set of morning ragas at 8 a.m., some evening ragas at 7 p.m., both uh, Debashish featuring this beautiful instrument that you have here on your lap. Many people are surprised to find that there even is an, an instrument like this, the Indian slide guitar. Tell us how this came to be. At the age of two, I should say informatively, the, with the informations, not a study. At the age of two, I heard first time Ustad Ali Akbar Khan played, in, played a concert uh, in Kolkata with 3,000 people in, in the Pandal and 10,000 people sitting in the all night on the tram line of Calcutta, hearing his spiritual, absolutely loving music. Mm -hmm. And I told my dad, if I get a chance to learn Sarod, I would like to learn from this guy. But at the age of nine, I went inside, uh, I went, uh, I applied, my father applied for national scholarship for Indian instrumental raga music. And amongst uh, <clears throat> maybe 80 to 100,000 talents of all around India, I got first prize. Uh, I stood first, but the scholarship has not been given to me because I played a foreign instrument, six string Hawaiian guitar and rag bhairav. Mm -hmm. That was the first addiction and first thing happened in my life, told me that, no, you play Indian raga music for your life on guitar and see what happens. But the inspiration was Ali Akbar Khan and his yes. Sarod, yes. which is also a memory. Positive and negative inspirations, both are most welcome in life, you know. Mm -hmm. So positive was Ali Akbar Khan at the age of two, and the negative was at the age of, I think it was seven, not nine to stick around all my life, not playing other instrument, but playing and evolve this guitar by myself. So I wanted to have, I learned with so many gurus, endless names, I can tell you. And they are all great, to my knowledge, what they have uh, transferred in my defaulted DNA. Um, is amazing in informations about and the taste of the music. Sitar, harmonium, my parents, singers, tabla maestros, everybody has put me, put inside me so much sparkles about the rhythm, melody, expression, theatrical expression, moods, um, which not really fill you, inside you happy and which entangle you, in which raga, what time, all these things has happened very early in, in my life. But I had only one six-string Hawaiian guitar. Where did you get a Hawaiian guitar in Calcutta as a six-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I got it at the age of three. Um, <laughs> my father, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you know that I have made a recently an album called uh, Hawaii to Calcutta, a tribute to Papa Taumoy. It's uh, a January release. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find in iTunes, Amazons, everywhere. Uh, Papa Taumoy was the first Hawaiian musician who traveled all the way to India and traveled with his family and family member band for more than 55 years. He didn't go back to Hawaii. And he first landed to Calcutta in 1933. And uh, during World War and before World War II, he was stuck with many international artists and was playing for American and British soldiers. And Calcutta was a headquarter of, you know, Calcutta was capital of British India. Right. So um, he was playing for the American soldiers. He was playing for the Bengali clubs. He was playing for Rabindranath Tagore, the great Nobel laureate and poet and uh, spiritual leader of our country. He played for Mahatma Gandhi in Mumbai. He played many 
Western European, he played for Hitler's family also. We, we have seen a photograph where Hitler and his son Lani was riding in a horse caravan and Lani was playing ukulele entertaining Hitler. So In India? No, he was in Germany. He was before. in Germany. Yeah. Okay. So he arranged the escape of 14 Jews who were living, he didn't know, in the basement of the house he was staying. He put all these guys in in, in Hawaiian dress and gave a ukulele and they were all playing all the way to Austria and he left them. But he never told to, wow. he's a pri private person, he never told to anybody. So I met him in 2004 and uh, he was 96 years old. I played a two hour concert with Led Kapana, myself, Bobby Ingano, uh, Alan Akaka, Shubhashish. We all went in his village and I awarded him and he said, you must come back, otherwise I'll call police. <laughs> you are Kolkata Wala, he said. <laughs> so anyway, so he left Hawaiian guitar genre when he left India. So there were many already Bengali, Taumai influenced people who were playing Rabindra Sangeet and these and Tagore songs, film songs. So my father got from his friend a Hawaiian guitar before I was born. And so it was staying in my household. If it's destiny, I believe it. Yeah. It's, you know, God is my bank, God is my power, God is my everything guru. Well, this is, first of all, a couple of things to say. It's not the first time a Western instrument has been, has found its way into classical Indian music, the violin, of course, but then the mandolin, the saxophone, the violin, you know, the, I mean, these are all instruments that have come from the West. Why don't you talk about Krishna? <laughs> Hare Krishna movement. Well, it, one of, <laughs> when you said that he came to, to Hawaii in 1933, 1933 is when Abba Alauddin Khan, uh, no, when, uh, when Uday Shankar came to the West for the first time. Exactly. So it was, you had, you had this crisscrossing going on of, you know, the Hawaiian musician in Calcutta and this great Indian dancer, you know. In California. With, with little Ravi in tow. Yes. Going to the United States. There was this kind of cross-cultural thing happening almost 100 years ago. Yes. You know? so, um, but I, I don't feel like I could speak to Krishna. Uh, <laughs> so instead, I will get to my second point which is that the guitar, and especially the Hawaiian guitar, seems very well suited to Indian music. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> that's a good question to answer, actually. You know, the diatonic music and half diatonic music, along with the, the modal music all over the world, doesn't believe that the music lives on note. It, it has a faith written inside that the music is between two notes. In between two notes, the movement from one note to the other note is the music. And that faith comes from the nature. If you close your hands, you think you have got wind in your hand? No. You open your hand full of wind. So in water, wind, sun ray, they're all modal, floating and analog. Right. Sand is digital. Hmm. So analog and digital, the movement has been seen. It is already there before we were born in this world. And the music of modality is an analog. Music of the staccato instruments, which has developed much later, is already digital. Because from one key to other key, there is no music. Right, so like a piano, for example. A piano Absolutely. was digital well Absolutely. before there was so digital. That is, the, that is the thing which was already there before we were born in this world. And Hawaiian music and Indian music is exactly the extract of those natural forces. Mm -hmm. That is why a slide guitar can be the best 
transport of those expression of melody. Like when we talk, when we talk, we don't say like that. When we talk, or when I'm going, when I'm going, you, see, you can see the graph with your hand. You see this graph? This graph is modal, and that can be produced with a bar on guitar, which cannot be produced like this. Right. So the human voice, which is Hawaiian music, supported by ukulele, mm -hmm. supported by bass, supported by other instrument, and Indian music supported by tanpura, is all about nature. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now to you know so. Take an instrument like the sitar, which has frets. They're movable, but it's still a fretted instrument. And the great sitarists are the ones who are getting around and across those frets. And they're making the instrument sing. Because all Indian classical music, whatever instrument you play, you're trying to evoke that sense of the voice. And yes. you said, that yes. movement. It's yes. Like one note is a note. And another note is a discrete note, but it's the movement, as you say, Between. from one to the other. Yes. Yeah. So whereas a piano, it's bum bum. In between, you, there is no music. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I mean I'm blunt. I, I understand. But you take it or don't take it. It's true. Because if you don't guide, you see sitar. Sitar came from Parjia. You know that tar is, sitar is there already. But that fretted instrument they make. So that is the music they played. So why it had to bend full string in Indian music? Because when they brought sitar from West, from Middle East, which from is West of Persia, India, yeah, yeah. They had to they have to sing they have to follow the gurus singing to learn. Because it's a age old learning process by singing. My, none of my guru played instrument in front of me. They all sang. They are all great instrumental musicians. Mm -hmm. I s sing for my son when he practiced music. I don't play with him. So sitar had to make a fret thicker, like five inch. They had to put a brass like this so that they can pull the strings and make it the instrument adaptable for Indian raga music the traditional music of India. Right. So that is the thing. But I still think that sitar, without being very skillful, cannot produce the, all the expression a voice can produce. But a lap steel guitar can produce much better. Yeah. You want to hear, hear that? Yes. Now, uh, you have, your instrument has eight melody strings. How many, uh, how many sympathetic strings do we have well, here? See, with my three finger, I pluck all the strings. I keep on harping in different speed and for different reasons. So making this instrument like an orchestra. Mm -hmm. But the main object is, these are, these are the eight strings I, I pluck right. and I glide. And this, 13 resonating strings, they just sing. But I keep on harping or extra putting accents when I make rhythmic things like So that gives me power, extra power, to create the more energy. If it, even it is a high energy. Music also talks about energy level. Low energy, mid energy, little high mid energy, high energy, stop high energy, low low energy. So all those I have to culminate right. in, into one piece of instrument. So this is the lowest energy I get. So even it strikes like this. See that? Very, still there. Very resonant, yeah. And then it's a mid. Then high mid, 
then high. So on this guitar, it's tuned right now in D. There are 10 strings on this guitar right now is on D440. So means it have to be tuned perfectly in one note. And then all the fifth, fourth are on the natural harmony. So then when I play like this, it's one, one sound. It will not shake like this. If it shakes like that, one note, one string is out of tune. It should not. So that is called Chaturangi, 23 stringed Indian slide guitar. You know, I didn't play basketball like you guys, but I, they, I, I tell you, I did, at the age of 15, I made the first Chaturangi. Mm. You made it? Yes. I, had, I, I could not do the carpentry. I had a sitar maker, very old, Calcutta guy. He helped me. Okay, Baba. Baba means little son. Also, Baba, we say dad. With the love, we say Baba. Okay, Baba, tell me, wh what do you want? I said, Un uncle, you know, the guitar should be hollow neck. Like you, you make Tanpura and sitar, well, hollow neck guitar, how can it happen? Then okay, can you draw? And then I draw on, on paper. And then I said, okay, but you know, structurally difficult because here and here you need more strength. And also here you have 24 strings. My first one was 24 strings. I, I have one string less because I have less hair now. <laughs> so, uh, and then he said, uh, okay, let's, let me try. Second day, third day. Months I was sitting with him all day, and he was working on that. He died in 1998, I think, 20 years later. So that was my first Chaturangi, mm. putting the chikari strings here. How much should be? I was playing and saying, okay, one and a half inch. Now it is one and a quarter inch. What will be the gaps? How, how high I need here? How high I need here? Where will be the resonating strings bridge? Here, like sitar, or here? Because traditionally, sitar has resonating strings here. Right, they're under it the underneath. Yeah, yeah. So this was the first instrument, guitar, guitar instrument, which had the resonating strings in the bass side, but with a jawari. So everything, every part of it, I had to engineer. And so did, this is a chicken and egg question, uh, did the engineering come as you developed your style of playing or did the, the, the possibilities of the instrument lead to changes in the way you play? It's like if you don't, if you don't inhale, you cannot exhale. Same thing. It's inhale and exhale, it's like a continuous process. I, I was telling Palash that this guitar, <laughs> Sound, this is 19 years old guitar. One and a half a year ago, the sound was not like this. Last year, American airline broke my guitar. Oof. So I had to go back to India. I just glued and played in Loyal Music Festival with a local luthier for a few hours. This was also broken. So they glued together and I went back to India next day. And I opened the back, from the back. And with last couple of years, I was studying the recent development of bracings, how the great luthiers are changing the bracing pattern, making guitar more, you know, energetic, more loud, more mellow, kind of. I went and I changed the entire bracing, mm. sitting there with my luthiers, asking them this much, this thick, do this, do this, rub that, okay, cut here, okay, paste it here. So it's been completely rebraced. Yes, one and a half and a year ago. And now it is. So you know the knowledge and your compassion. You can, it can make you a billionaire or it can make you Debashish Bhattacharya. It's your, your choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, 
Give us a little tour of the instrument. Okay. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a beautiful, I mean, the woodwork is exquisite, as, as with most Indian classical instruments. But this, you, is, this no, is not... No, sorry, most... sorry, sorry. You will not, you will not find any ex, um, exquisite instrument like this no. in Indian classical music till today. Yeah, it's really anybody wrong. anybody is thinking today have seen my guitar. <laughs> this is the one in million because I am a painter and I live on perfection. I I never left anything done as as perfection. Mm -hmm. So far my knowledge, I never left anything 99.9. Before it crossed the 100, I never left it. So this is a unique design, I got it from Elora. You know the cave of Elora in India? From Buddha, Buddha's time, all those designs. So I got all these carving styles, the idea from Elora, and I did all the pencil work on the wood myself. Mm. So it's custom made to Debashish. And who, is it the same person who made the instrument that did the scroll work on either side of, of the neck no, and through no. the neck? I have a group of people in middle of Bengal, North Bengal, I should say. They, traditionally, they are family of ivory carver family. So ivory carving, they had uh, their father, their grandfather got national awards. But, uh, so they are doing a work for me now. Okay. So when I take the instruments from our factory, I have a factory now, which makes my instrument. I own a factory. I don't have a Mercedes, but I have a factory. <laughs> um, uh, so um, when the guitar I first take out from the factory, I, I put six string and check the sound, if the sound is okay, ding, ding, dong, dong, everything is fine. Then the guy comes from 500 kilometers, take the guitar and go by train, and then for 15 days or 20 days, he works on, the, on my pencil. How many of these do you have? Well, I have produced over the last 10 years, maybe 30. Wow. So other and people are playing them? 20 is in, with me, yeah. and 10 I have given to my disciples yeah. around the world. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of things that, that, that are interesting, uh, and maybe I'll give this back to you um, for a moment. Just to rest my arm. Uh, <laughs> um, when you're playing this instrument, because of the, the ability to slide up and down the strings, you produce a, a range of effects, of ornaments, that almost sound like South Indian music, like the, the gamakas of South Indian music. You're laughing. Why is that? You know, in North India, many musicians thinks I am crazy. <laughs> Same in South India. Many musicians of my generation or my elder generation, they think I am crazy. But I tell you the truth. I don't see there is no South, no North in India. I see it's total India. These days I don't see even India. I think the globe is India, you know. Mm. Because, you know, you live in New York, I live in Calcutta. Somebody lives in San Francisco. So a San Francisco guy, excel. And one of your lifetime, you breathe that same air, and you excel. And maybe in another month or so, the same air I breathe in Calcutta. So tell me, who is Indian and who is not? So my concept of analy analysis is very different. I study, I analyze, analyze my music with the logic. Mm -hmm. Logic is my guru. For me, there is no south, no north. Gamaka, ah, there's no, this is Gamaka. If you can sing it, you do it. My, many of my students, <laughs> many of my North American popular singer, pop artists, singers, they do that. Ah, not that fast. No. Ah, so that's gamaka. In South Indian, they use more chili powder. 
in north india in my house i lives little bit chilly so i am south north and he is south because he is more chilly no <laughs> because their music has full of gamaka their food has more red chilli powder mm -hmm. we use other stuff they don't use right because geographically they are slightly narrowed mm -hmm. right so like india north from mumbai to calcutta 2011 uh, 11 kilometers in south from bangalore to chennai is not even 1000 so it's just half so their music from our gamaka is a a just see the timing in this space they will sing a a so the entire curve has been pushed together in a half speed half a space so the curve is now not like this it's like now, now this mm -hmm. so that is the difference between the sound good good answer that very good answer you buy it i'm no. i'm buying it i am buying it uh i also want to <laughs> call call back to something you said before about the kind of the importance of emotion and in you know integrity and honesty and and compassion and things like that and you're saying logic is your guru if you can be both north and south you can be both logical and emotional and intuitive and that seems to be where the the sweet spot is exactly so then the other thing about this instrument is and again uh i've had a chance a number of opportunities over the years to see you play and this this There are moments in your performance where I'm thinking he's getting awfully close to playing chords which <laughs> is another thing that we you know don't associate with Indian classical music. Shall I answer? Please. <laughs> Or we could just sit here and look at each other for a few minutes. Uh, 1992 1993 I was touring with many legends of indian classical music on a tour called festival of india and uh, <clears throat> ustad zakir hussain the great tabla player pandit buddhadev das gupta the great sarod maestro ullas kashalkar the great singer from pune uh, pandit viji jog the violinist who also doesn't distinguish north or south viji jog viji jog yeah, yeah. great player. Let me ask you just and uh, and then um, I attended a couple of uh, workshop with Pandit Vijay Kumar Kechlu the great uh, musicologist singer and guru of real a man who has dedicated his life for indian classical music uh, propagation and um, we were discussing about this that there are six ragas out of 10 scales of hindustani music which is so old that harmony the word was not been invented or used in musical concept but the harmony as in practice was already there in those ragas Let's talk about this for a couple of minutes. Like da 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 da. It's a Dorian scale. Da da flat da 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 flat da da. You see the third and seventh is flat in this scale. da 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 was the four notes and uh, they considered da 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 as a mirror the word was mirror mm. not harmony so whatever happens in the first four note of the octave the second part of the octave has the same melodic pattern or expression da 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 da
So Harmony was already there. You see, one, three, five, four, when I sing as a note, one, three, five is already a chord. Yeah. So the essence of the chord, expression of the chord is, even I'm not playing like, it is already there. Sa ga pa ma ni re ma ga pa di ga re ma da re sa ga pa ma re ma ga sa ga re ni re sa. So chord and harmony is already lying, but we don't focus it. Like in Indian culture, we don't say thank you, thank you every time. I love you, I love you. It's we don't say that. It's already in our heart. It is in the silence. It is always in the silence. It is already there. So likewise. The harmony and chord, we don't need to use it to show that always it's there. But I sometimes bring out little because, you know, you know, you know what? Well, because you can. You have an instrument that does that. <laughs> because people love it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I am in the service of people. Well, you know, it's interesting you, you, you make the point of going back to those old, like the Dorian scale and the Phrygian scale, you know, the basis of Western classical music. If you look at Bach, those solo violin sonatas and the solo cello suites, they're f full of implied harmony. Exactly. But not actual chords no. for the most part. No. That inspires me yeah. a lot because I love Western classical music and I am making a, an album right now which if you hear it, you will not, you will forget that I did that cons two concerts yesterday and you will look at me, are you the same person? <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I can play a little of that song. Um, okay. you, want to, you want to hear? Yeah, yes, please. This is in rag coffee. Rag coffee. Rag coffee. You can say it's rag coffee and you can say bullshit. This is not coffee. This is Dorian scale. You made up something, mixing all the stuff. I, I, I take it. I accept that. But 
But if you're a fan of Irish folk music, you're also going to say, well, I, well wait a minute, I recognize that, that, that kind of scale form as well. Cause, or if you're a fan of Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass, there's a moment there that sounded like days of wine and honey or whatever. I was sitting in, his, in the studio in Mountain of Bonnie Doon in Santa Cruz, in a studio. If you put the GPS on, you will not see any house. It's only pine trees comes in Google Earth. And uh, I went on the deck backside, seeing the moon, and the melody came in my head. I went inside the studio, started writing the song, and then recorded entire song with all the harmonies and some added tracks of rhythm and this and that, till 2 o'clock in the morning. And that song is done. Wow. It's not Indian classical music. No. No. But. Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. This is not Indian classical. It's Western classical music. It's, it's <laughs> kind of a mix of a lot of different things, um, which is something, again, that this instrument can be very good at. Now, you've been working with Henry Kaiser, the American guitarist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, and you guys have cooked up a couple of things together, right? Yes. We are working on. This will be. Uh, we are working. Uh, I'm working on Henry, actually. You're working on Henry. Yes. All right. He and me. Henry's are, already a piece of work. We have done one song. <laughs> but you know, he's a global traveler. Yes. He's a. A musician who's traveled literally yes. from north to south, east to west, and you know, absorbing all those different. So absolutely, is that, is that the kind of person you look for when you look out at your audience? Is I, ne I never look for any, anyone. I never. I always, I always believe that the I have one life, and God has given me a great life, but my life is not my myself, and no, nothing starts from me. It starts from there. So I don't look for my collaborator. The collaborator God sent me to me. I have never looked for a company. My first albums were recorded when I had no idea who these people came and knocked my door. So I am I am not the person who never I never spent a single rupee for marketing myself. I only I only know that God is my bank and God is my source of all satellite connections. <laughs> So when I did the first album with World Music Network, I know Henry Kaiser made a wonderful review of that album, Calcutta Chronicles, which won the Grammy nomination. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, when I come to California, I, s I have seen in many of my concerts, Henry was there. And we made wonderful friendship momentarily, but that disappeared also. We didn't save it. And then I came to see Daniel Thomas. I started making a temple of music in Santa Cruz. Mm. And one day Daniel said, hey, do you know Henry Kaiser? I said, yes. Henry lives five minutes away down in the mountain. <laughs> what? <laughs> then I sent Henry an email. Henry, I mean, Bonnie this is my address. And this is phone number. In five minutes, Henry calls my <laughs> home phone number of Daniel. And he is there in another 10 minutes with his car. <laughs> and then rest of history. We cook for he cooked each other amazing meals. When I was coming to New York, before my flight, Henry cooked some great cookies and brought the cookies for my road on road. Nice. So see, the collaboration doesn't come at the first, <clears throat> that is kind of my audience. Let me play for the audience. No. You play from your heart. You play for people. You mix things, what you have been given opportunity by God. And you believe that you are nobody, you are just a carrier. And then things come and things go. You are like a carrier. You receive and you send. Like a cable. Your Same inhale, way. exhale analogy exactly. would work very well. You there. know, there most of the inhaler, most of the receiver of everything in our body is here. Most of it. Except the skin. Everywhere. But our all exhaler is down. So upper chakra receives all the informations and energy and lower chakra releases it. 
And on my lower chakra, I have a lap steel guitar. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> With my two hands work on that to release all the informations from here and it goes on the strings. Like a smoke comes out, it goes in the nature, you know. Well, that's a really great uh, metaphor to leave this with. Debashish Bhattacharya with us at the New York Guitar Festival. Thank you, John. Debashish, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.